what's up guys so let's talk a little bit about the clan sieges and what we learned from the first battles our clan was kind of super into it and taking it way too seriously i was already kind of warning to people beforehand that we're probably gonna meet like level 50 players or something like that so don't expect that all your hard work is like gonna be relevant but we actually got very hard or fairly hard matchup let me quickly show you so we were matched against final game Bachi's clan who are a very strong clan but so are we and we were able to do very well against them as as you can see in the score i mean we won i mean all the best to the game Bachi's clan and i'm sure they will actually be fairly high ranked in this content as well we kind of had uh fairly even and like you know hard matchup I thought we would get super easy but this was actually very good for us because we learned a lot from this and were able to make some conclusions but um, and I think this is the biggest thing that people should take about the sieges for the next battle basically if we just um if we look at the normal siege menu like you get points from defending or defeating different buildings and actually that that was point of confusion for a lot of people that we were at 5000 points after destroying all of their buildings and i think that happened with many clans and people were like curious that can't you even get to the 7000 point mark but you can basically get 5000 points from fully clearing the enemy and then you can get past that if you are able to defend some buildings and they stay intact and like after the siege is over we got like um 3500 or 3450 points at the end and we're able to like get the final um reward but basically the win condition that um or what everybody assumed as the win condition is that you defend the stronghold and as long as you keep it you win and i think that's that's still kind of the case but i think we were approaching this from um wrong perspective like you can add these bonuses to the garrison or stronghold but you can't uh, i don't think even in future i don't think you can set any conditions in this um section and basically what we did like i said we we overthought the <laughs> The upcoming seats like way too hard but people were super into it so we we went all the way but we were basically looking at everybody's champions and like what are their best defense teams and then also looking at their rosters and seeing if we can figure out better defense teams for them and basically we put like uh, the 12 best defense teams in the stronghold and then we put some of the other best teams on the defense towers and after that we basically said that people can put the rest wherever they want and do do what they want because we were not expecting the first battle to be hard and i think that's probably the approach that most clans did that if you are into it and you even like put much thought into it but we actually learned <laughs> from experience that even though the end goal might might be to protect your stronghold that's I, I already know that that's definitely not the way to actually go in the future i mean you want to have good defenses here to protect it but of course enemy can also save their save their best teams to attack the stronghold teams and you're not going to be able to set conditions here so you're not going to come you're not going to be able to come up with some free strategies and if they just you know are able to counter it I'm, I'm sure some of their members if the matchup is evenly matched they will be able to counter the team somehow because it's not like classic arena and you need to win fast if they have like a fast team maybe you can just go with arima and double reviver or, and something like that and eventually beat it but what happened in our battle that the stronghold actually didn't really carry us and i think maybe like half of our stronghold teams they didn't even get hit and some of the other teams too didn't didn't even get hit i had like one of my two defense teams got hit and the other one didn't but actually what carried us in the sea in the 
in the siege war, I was gonna say CBC, but clan wars, siege war, whatever you want to say, was actually some, you know, fringe strategies that people put on these uh, less important uh, towers. Like, if you protect the... Um, is it the mana shrines? Yeah, if you protect the mana shrines, you get points. And if you protect the stronghold, you get points. And then I think... Um, what was the point? There's some other point for for protecting the defense towers, but uh, anyway, you basically you want to protect those three things. That's what everybody is thinking about: defense tower, mana shrine, and stronghold. But you know, in these actually, I think some of our best teams, I think one was in like a normal normal tower, and the other one was in a de defense tower. Actually, was it that way? Maybe it wasn't. Anyway, but in these rooms where you can you can set your conditions, maybe you can come up with some some weird free strategies. And even if the end goal for the enemy clan is to beat your stronghold teams, but there might be one um, condition that maybe you can do support only uh, room or something like that, and you happen to have great champions on that one. Maybe you can get multiple wins and waste multiple of the enemy's um, battle keys and that way even though it's not your final defense and it might not even be the best defense in your clan or that you can personally do but in th that specific rule set it might be might be a team that others can't beat or they need to go out of their way to build or regular champions for that that might be the way to go to like waste the enemy keys and win and we have some like couple funny examples. We had basically couple people that got tons of defense wins and <laughs> let me pull it up. Basically Alika was like one of the MVPs in our seats. Um, okay, okay, let me, I have to minimize it because I don't really want to get in the way. Okay, I'll, I'll just put put myself a little bit on the side here, but um, uh, it doesn't matter. So. The, the, this was one of our MVP teams, so Hunter from our clan, and this was not something that we were planned. Like I said, our clan, we plan, plan the teams for the, like, the final things that you have to protect, the stronghold and the other ones, the defense towers and shrines. This was just one random room, I think. Oh, oh yeah, you can see here, it's post 6, so uh, which room is that? Yeah, it's this room, and I think these are random every time. I'm not even quite sure. Pretty... Yeah, they're gonna be random every time, so they are gonna rotate. I'm sure there's not gonna be infinite amount of things that can be in the rule set, so you can always, you know... You can theory craft, but eventually you will know all of the nooks and crannies that you can do. But, so basically... <laughs> Hunter had the bright idea that he he chose the rule of like attack only room. You can only use attack champions. And even though his uh, his team here might not uh, look super scary, like Mountain King, Rotos, Alika, and Gaius, but uh, and I don't know his exact builds. And like even if I knew, I wouldn't you know I wouldn't go super in detail. So some people in the clan were like um, afraid that I would leak our strategies or our uh, document about our defense teams because like I said we, we have a document of like people's champions and their speeds and builds and so on <laughs> when we came up with these strategies but Hunter's team I think he got yeah he got 12 d wins in defense with this team and I think he got one or two wins with the other one I think he had like 13 or 14 defense wins in total and he totally carried our clan I think there was one guy that, um, we'll, we'll look at his team too, but there was somebody else that I think got maybe two wins less in defense or something like that. But both of them got well above 10 wins in defense. And I don't know the builds here, but so we have this build uh, Mountain King, Rotos, Alika, Gaius team. And I guess many people were just not prepared to um, prepared for this type of setup. I can't exactly, you know, look up the history right now because the siege is over but at least I took some pixels <laughs> pixels before it ended for you know cataloging our history and I guess it is good for the video too but if I have to like speculate here and I don't know his builds I 
on purpose I didn't ask him about it. But maybe let, let's say that he has like very fast stone skin Caius or Alika or something like that. You you might not know, but Alika is like a basher that it has a lockout and it's also a nuker. <laughs> I have I, I have lost at least once or twice to Alika in live arena, so so it has even gotten me before. But basically, this team looks almost like a joke. It's not scary, but I guess he had good builds on these champions, and other people weren't prepared for this setup. And yeah, he was basically farming farming wins in defense and destroying the the enemy clan by himself and um and carrying our clan to victory and I think that's gonna be the real way to go in the future when when you try hard the sieges obviously you need to put good teams in the stronghold and you want to like prioritize on the towers and the stuff that gives you points if you kill it or defend it but I think the, the rooms along the way that you need to get into those you need to look at the different um, a different restrictions that you can put on these rooms and then look at your champions and your gear and maybe you can come up with some quirky uh, quirky rooms where you happen to have exceptionally good team and maybe other people um, are not prepared like you don't have a good team of attack only champions and so on and I'm sure in future like people are gonna put more thought into this and build more champions and so on so you know they are gonna be more prepared and by the way one thing i would say just so you know i got multiple questions about this and i uh purposefully asked plarium community managers about it but let's say that you put some team in defense and you have some gear on them and then some people were asking that so then if you swap the gear uh, do does the team still have the gear or not and what Plarium was saying that not exactly like it will refresh they don't they didn't give us number like how, how many minutes it takes for the team to refresh but they said that if you swap the gear it will refresh so maybe maybe if you like put your best gear on your defense team you could maybe when you do your offense battles you could maybe quickly swap it around to your offense team and then then put it back to your defense team but you basically need to have your gear up on the champions in the defense team, so you can't um, cheese it that way. Then let me give you another example, and I'm sure you guys maybe had some, some of your own experiences like this in your clans, and we need to come up with um, new stuff in the future events. But other team that we had, I, I think he got multiple, multiple more wins after this picture too. I think... Um, do I have it anywhere? I think I think Hunter got like 14 wins and Dr. Love got 12 wins if I recall correctly. S something like that in, in defense. And Dr. Love was also running a room with um, specific uh, restriction. I think this room was that you have like 10% um, chance to get extra turn on magic and force affinity champions or something like that. It, it was a weird rule. <laughs> It wasn't like specific faction or specific affinity, but he was just destroying the enemy with these. Like they tried all kinds of teams, and his Harima team was able to do it. So can't can't really get into the details. I I, I guess I should have made this video before the seeds ended, but you know they did multiple attacks even in the last couple of hours. So I wish I could look it up right now. I don't know if you guys can do it, but. We were doing the thing in my clan that I I was talking about before. That, uh, let me show you. That um, we switched clans specifically for um, to reset our Hydro Progress. So so we can get easy matchups and keep on, uh, keep on doing good and get all of the rewards. I know some people might think this is, you know, we are playing the game too hard and we are gonna like, you know, ruin the day of some ultra casual clans but you know other people might you know spend more money or put have better luck on champions that they have double yumeko or whatever we're just doing what we can and basically we were in that clan and then we just after the seats we just today or 
two days less yesterday, depending on your time zone. We switched to another clan. We basically have two clans now. And um, we still have a couple of people that didn't move. But... Um, so I, I don't know if you guys can see the battle history. I can't see the whole locks because we just switched the clan. But I hope, um, I hope that was enough examples. I'm look, looking at my pixels. Do I have anything else interesting to show? Yeah, I I think that's about it. We're not gonna we're not gonna make it super super long to, long video today. I need to mix it up a little bit. Some people love my long videos, and some people tell me that can I make some ten video ten minute videos sometimes. I think there was one guy that has made multiple comments saying that he has a challenge for me to make make a video that is less than ten minutes, and may, maybe that will happen someday. But anyway, that's my thoughts about the first siege battle some strategy and planning for tryharding in future. I hope this is helpful for you guys. If you came up with something better, then let me know in the comments and other people. I'm My clan is super into this. I know everybody is not as hyped, up, hyped about the um, sieges, but we are. We're talking a lot about this and <laughs> if you have any good ideas, I'm I'm sure we're gonna talk about it too, but uh, also I'm gonna I think I'm gonna make a video. I already DM'd multiple people and I think we're gonna have a panel discussing the sieges in a couple days, so I'll have another video about this soon with um experiences from other clans. But anyway, that's it for this video. Have a nice day and see ya.